Horror, you may tease. Hey, what's going on? This is Klepto Stash. You know the routine. It's been a while since I've done my last video. And I am currently sick. Not even supposed to be really talking. But, who cares? I want to talk a little bit about privacy and browsers. <sighs> the whole thing is, is that we all use browsers, be it Firefox, Chrome, Opera, whatever the hell you're using. We all use them. And they all leak like a damn sieve. And they all hand out your information. Whichever one you use. Now, you can sort of tweak and and sort of set it up where it won't leak a whole lot, but it still leaks. Even Firefox. So, I wanted to show you how I do it. And I didn't just uh, look up on this by happenstance. It's been a constant process uh, of learning how to lock it down and using Wireshark or uh, Net uh, Net View Act Active. I think that's what it's called. The app where you can see the connections that your browser is making while it's being turned on. A lot of those connections are going to Google. It's going to a lot of root certificates and the like. So, but to start out with, to get you there in a quick, fast, and a hurry, without too many inconveniences, there's always inconveniences when it comes to privacy and protecting it. But we'll start out with uh, Crunchbang's great forum post on the paranoid uh, configuration for Firefox. The important things are making sure a lot of the caching is off. And if you got broadband, you don't really need caching anyway. If you're on a, on a mobile platform, then I could see how it's useful. Um, because AT&T and Verizon are, you know, up your ass. Anyways, so, turning off the browser caching, be it disk or memory, offline, is important. Turning off the dome storage is important. Because a lot of the times that's where those things lie either be it drive-by downloads or some flash video you opened up or something uh, that's where the nastiness lies at a lot of the times but it goes even further it goes into DNS, it goes into HT, uh, excuse me, it goes into uh, I IPv6 it goes into great detail it tells you exactly how to do this for Firefox Here's what I do for Chrome. First of all, don't worry about the whole flash plugin thing. That's my own little personal issue. But disk cache size zero. Zero. Disable local storage. That'll save you a lot. Disable databases. That's a sort of iffy one. That might cause you a little bit of problems. Disable session storage. Yes. And once you do those things then you you're pretty good it's still gonna leak a little bit because of extensions and other odds and ends and the Google web API and the back-end stuff so there's really no way you're totally getting around it but there's a couple ways you can test how you're doing you can do uh, things like this ever cookie test which I'll provide all the links on the video and this will do some very, very good testing to see if it can leave an ever cookie, aka super cookie, aka zombie cookie, um, on your machine. And even though you, even though you're wiping the cache and all this kind of stuff, it can still pull those out. Um, and so I've done it before. I've got to the point now where, as you can tell, you see where it says undefined, 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 undefined because I've got that, that all that stuff locked down and so it's just not gonna happen another mechanism which is pretty cool is uh, the HSTS super cookies and this is something a little bit different this is called the HTTP strict transport security and so this sort of tells you whether or not you're, the, the website you're connecting to is legitimate a legitimate website that you connected to before make sure making sure it's the same website um, but this is a great security feature 
but it poses problems because you can't be tracked. Um, another one is this one right here. Uh, they call it uh, Sniffly, a practical timing attack to sniff browser history using HSTS and Firefox and Chrome. Now, I know how to deal with this, but, you know, I went to a couple sites a little while ago, and then, hey, DuckDuckGo, and I went to Reddit. But, uh, if, if, if it had the list of all the websites I went to, that might pose a problem <laughs> for me, as far as privacy goes. That would not be good for someone to find out every website I've ever gone to. And you should go to this website. It will shock you. You will want to get your shit together. Once you see how easy it is to find out all the sites you go to. Once you once people find out how many sites you go to, what sites you go to, then they build a profile on you. And then there's a whole sort of rigmarole into that. But, let's talk about that for a moment. Let me show you how jacked up this is. Profile. Medit site. Sick. This file right here. Site security service state. You see this? This tells you whether or not your site you're going to is legitimate. And so this stays in the Firefox profile as a very long list. And I clean it out from time to time. Now it does it does provide a service to making sure that the site the site you go to is a legitimate site and it's not the wrong site or it's that let's say that uh, uh, you know some sort of uh, certificate is off or whatever have you um, it it serves a purpose but if it can be used as an attack to build a profile on you then I don't need it now another thing you should do is have a good extension slash add-on for cookie management and other things. I use Umatrix, which I've talked about before. Um, there was a sort of prototype called uh, HTTP Switchboard. You can see that video um, in, in my listings. But this deals with cookies, uh, plugins, scripts, all that stuff, and what you can, what you want to allow by default, and what you don't want to allow by default, and all that. But with Firefox in general, I have something called, um, it's called the, uh, what the hell is this thing called? Uh, I forget the damn name already. Hang on. I use it every day, and I keep forgetting. It's called Self-Destructing Cookies. And what's cool about this, let's get into it. I block cookies by default, but I will allow certain cookies that I want. And so what's cool about this is that it's going to block them by default. U matrix in general will make sure they're not even being read. Not only written, but read. You, you can even read them if I don't want you to, which is by default. But it also includes local storage on uh, self-destructing cookies. So you can wipe your cache if you enable cache. You can wipe your local storage, which all the shenanigans happen right there. Um, you get the whole strict cookie access policy uh, and, and sort of things and, and it'll, sometimes it'll tell you you know uh, I, we, I just did this, I just wiped the cache or this cookie's been removed and you can set it up to where if you allow a cookie for a session um, if you close the tab the cookie's gone but it was useful for that moment in time and then when you open that tab up again you get a fresh new cookie so you're, you're getting cookies are getting in but it's on your terms and how you want it which is the way I like it um, Chrome slash Chromium has a good cookie manager it's a little old and out of date I think it's uh, the latest update is like 2014 but it's called vanilla cookie manager and it's very similar um, but uh, self destruction self destructing cookies whatever it's called is a lot better and you sort of 
look at your whitelist and destroy your and, and sort of get rid of things on the whitelist that shouldn't be there that you added by accident. And it does more things like wiping the local cache and local storage. So there you go. All these links will be on YouTube for this video so that you can see them and sort of make the changes for yourself. Now I will agree, some of this is like super, super overkill. But the testing that I do, um, really when you get into the whole, you know, privacy debate and debacle about how much information is really leaking out of your browsers. I mean, by default, uh, a no, no profile. Firefox sets the profile up for you when you first start a browser up. It's enabled for it's got some malware protection. But that malware protection is from Google. And it sends information to Google. And so there's a little back and forth there. Uh, when it comes down to it, is that something I need? Is that something I should have enabled by default? And then why would I want uh, Yahoo as my de default search um, on Firefox? Sure, they made a deal with Yahoo. Doesn't mean I'm going to use Yahoo. I'm going to use DuckDuckGo. I'm going to use Starting Page for all the right reasons. So, when you get into this, it gets a little thick, it gets a little murky, sometimes there's some inconveniences, there's inconveniences with everything, but I suggest if you use Firefox, you go to the uh, the website of the Crunchy Bang Forum, and you look at some of these things. You don't have to do all of them. I would say if you do some of these right here, you're almost damn near good. I think there's some things like disabling IPv6 and some some you know DNS stuff, HTML, uh, HTTP pipelining. Some of that stuff you could change, and you know it'd be better, be you know, but that right there will get you where you really want to be. Hopefully one day we won't even need the whole cookies thing, but it's getting more and more dangerous now with canvas fingerprinting and everything else where they build profiles on you. Oh, you like to go to this side, you like to go to that side, you like to go da 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 and next thing you know they figure out what you like. The next thing you know you get an ad that tells you uh you, you need tampons if you're a girl. Or if you're a guy like me and um you buy a lot of knives, hey this is the cool knife for this year. Go buy it, click on the link. Oh, you need a flashlight too? Oh, you need some ammo? Or whatever you're into, you're building a profile. And you don't even know. You're just visiting websites, just doing what you normally do. And somebody's trying to make a nickel off of it. Off of you and I. And that's how it goes. So, a little inconvenience, a good amount of privacy. I say it's worth it. What say you? We'll talk later. Talk soon. I'm gone.